In time for the Baumer exhibition in 2019, WSI released this model of a four axle Liebherr crane. It is the LTM 1090 4.2 and it comes in the standard Liebherr box style. Inside we have the usual trays and there's also this card which we'll see shortly. The trays are sealed with tape so you have to cut it with a knife and there's the model inside. Something new with this model is a card and on the back is a QR code. And the way this is supposed to work is that you scan the code with your mobile phone and that takes you straight through to the WSI website where there's more information about the model. Here you see how it works and it takes you through to a manual section. But at the time of the review there's no content yet for this particular model. We will get the crane ready for the road and the counterweight comes in four pieces and there are different ways of carrying it in transport mode. And the reason for this is to provide different axle loadings for different countries. In the first position the counterweight was close to the crane and that's because with the Vario ballast system the counterweight can be either closer or further away. Here we're loading up the parts to get to a maximum axle load of 16 tonnes per axle. And that leaves us with one piece of counterweight that won't fit under the boom. And that sits at the back, although on the model it only rests loosely. There is a lattice fly jib and that gets carried in the usual way. You rest it on supports and then it is pinned into position. The pin has got a loop at the end which makes it easier to handle. But it's a bit more obvious looking than a flat headed pin. There's another separate part included with the model and that's this cable reel. And there's a position for it on the side of the boom. But there's not actually a fixed connection there so you have to improvise. And because we like the look of this on the model we'll use a little bit of plastic putty. And then you can just press the reel on and it stays in place. <laughs> Looking underneath and the detailing is really nice and you can see that there are lots of detailed suspension and transmission components and the tyres have a decent tread pattern. The driving cab has a beacon light and a small graphic on the windscreen and the other details are pleasingly done including space for a number plate. The steps outside the cab have a nice textured surface. The wheels are detailed slightly differently between the non-driven and driven axles. And it's always good to see that the tyres have branding on the side walls. The detail is also enhanced by many small graphics. It's also good to see that the outriggers are fully retracted in travelling mode. The cab has got nice detail inside, there are metal grab rails and small graphics. All of which give it a realistic appearance. The high detail also continues behind the crane cab. And moving to the back there's a fixed ladder. And the lights and number plate all look realistic too. There are more small graphics and lights around the Vario ballast and the winch. And with the cable spools mounted on the boom, it gives it a busy appearance. The lattice fly jib is an all metal part and it's reasonably well formed. With the boom up we can see that another area of high detail is behind the carrier cab. And the engine area has various grills and other details. The textured surfaces on the carrier deck are also really nice. Looking at the telescopic sections and they are all nicely detailed with a thin profile. Each section also has three different locking points. 
One detail not so good though is the pulleys in the boom head and hook are solid blocks. For the features review we begin by checking the axles and they each have independent steering with a decent range of movement. So there's no problem replicating any steering modes of the real crane but there's no suspension on the axles. Let's see how the model rolls along and it does reasonably well but on review model downward pressure was required to ground all of the wheels. Let's set the steering and by moving the wheels we can certainly get a good pose. But the model doesn't roll quite so nicely because of friction between the tyres and their surrounds. We move on to set the crane up and we pull the outriggers out in the usual way. They are two stage metal and when you disconnect the pads from their transport position you wind them down. And it's good that when the pistons are extended they have smooth faces. Included with the model are four spreader plates. And if we look at the outrigger beams under load the rear ones are perfectly straight but the ones at the front are not quite as good. The range of movement on the outriggers is excellent and you can sit the crane up high and there's no problem at all setting a wheels free pose. Also nice on the model are the fold down ladders. We disconnect the hook from its travelling position and raise the boom and the main boom ram has a metal jacket so it's smooth to operate and you lock a position by using a key on a tiny grub screw. So you can set any pose that you want. Moving on to rotating the crane and it was slightly sticky to start with. But it did get smoother after turning it for a couple of times. The real crane would pick up the rear counterweight piece and put it on the stack. And then it would rotate the rear end over it to attach it. But there is a small scaling issue on the model because you can't quite replicate that. So to attach the counterweight we need the assistance of a giant hand crane. And then we can lock in the attachment points. And because of the Vario ballast system there are two positions for the counterweight close or further away from the crane. Once you've got the lifting points in position you can then use the Allen key. And that winds up the screw pistons to hold the counterweight firmly in place. You extend the telescopic boom in the usual way and there are three locking points on each section and it all works smoothly enough. The winch is very good because it's got a nice spring loaded action with a brake but you need to put some proper load on the hook for the rope to be free running through the solid pulley blocks. If the boom doesn't give you enough reach you can use the fly jib and it's the usual folding type with a pin to lock the full extension. The fly jib has a guide wheel which opens up and fixes in position using a tiny brass nut and bolt. And there's also an offset angle ratchet which you set using tiny brass nuts and bolts as well. The fly jib mounts on top of the boom head in a normal way and it's a good fit and you secure it using steel pins. But because the tie off point and safety chain are fixed in position you can't remove them to make it look right when the fly jib's attached. Also the hook block supplied isn't really right with a fly jib and a single line hook would have been better. This is another very nice mobile crane from WSI models. The high point is the excellent detailing throughout and the majority of the functionality also hits a high standard. 
You can expect to see this crane released in many different colours. And overall as a 4 axle crane model it is excellent.